Okay, guys, welcome back to the Girl I Guess podcast. You can't put that voice on after you talk about blowing up dicks. <laughs> You're trying to come in with, hey, y'all. <laughs> I just, if you ever, this is like, I don't know, 2000, if you ever been to a Cash Money, mm-hmm. Rough Riders, or Nelly concert, they were blowing up dicks on the stage. No lie. With a stripper pole. It was the craziest shit. And I love Lil Wayne. And at the time, he only had one song with one line. And it was after you back it up, then stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like 12 or 13. And I had to get to the concert. Yeah. Okay. But my, I was like crisscross, immature. That's yeah. where they was allowing me to go. And Backstreet Boys? Yeah, Backstreet Boys, of course. Oh, they let me go to, for 106 and Park... They gave us tickets to the Apollo to see Jay-Z. But then I didn't tell my parents where I was going. But I got to go to a Jay-Z concert. You know, Jay-Z wasn't doing all that. Nah. Yeah. He didn't even move. Yeah, no. His shows were like, he had the... I loved his tour with Mary J. Blige. I went to that in Philly. And that's just... He gives you a lot of like, you know, the lights, the whole nine. Mm -mm, I didn't make it to a Jay-Z concert. Yes, you did. Until I was... Oh. Until he was starring with... No, he wasn't starring with Beyonce. Beyonce <laughs> at a concert, but you treated it like a Beyonce concert. Beyonce, we'll he was a guest. One. He was a guest at the Beyonce concert, but he was a really good guest. I'm so mad. You continuously say that. Literally, he, I wish people could have seen how your camera would go down when he performed. Beyonce come up and your camera. Had to save my battery. <laughs> I was working on 15%. <laughs> we had to use that wisely. My phone went dead and I was in Uber and you left and I had to figure out how to get we, home. We and talked did, about this already. Okay. okay. We, talk, okay we, well, we talked about this. Listen, okay. we all we all did some things for I was just I was just chasing a little relationship. I was like, "All right, I'm Audi." And now look at us and I don't even talk to him. So well, Look at that. Girl, I guess. <laughs> <clears throat> I am one of your hosts, Ming Lee. Hey, it's Karen here. <laughs> KC, you know, Karen's still a little bit tainted out there. So go on, KC. Just a little bit, but the outside world is opening back. So, you know, my female white Karen counterparts are about to get themselves back together. Well, <laughs> Texas just opened up today. Um, I think it opened up a few days ago, but God bless them. Um, I don't think that's necessary. Well, I think like they should. I'm not. <clears throat> I mean, because I live in Atlanta, so everything has been um, open, uh, open. Mm-hmm. But we do have a mass mandate. So I don't think he should have just I think he should keep the mass mandate mm-hmm. in place. Like You can open back up the businesses and stuff like that. But the mass, I think like if you're telling people they don't have to wear a mask, they won't. I think it's it's. I don't know. I'm. I be trying to figure out what's people's reasoning behind things, but then I'm thinking, given with everything that happened with like the flooding and and stuff like that, they probably can only handle one crisis at a time. So he's like, okay, we're handling this flooding, and I gotta, you know, we still gotta deal with masks and X Y Z. Maybe that's why they removed it. But again, till they like give people this vaccine and the priority in which they're doing it is so fucked up. So it's not even going to, to me, it should go to essential workers first. And by essential, anybody who's an Uber, who works in a supermarket, who works, you know, doctors, healthcare, and things like that, elderly, or, you know, somebody who may work in some sort of customer service field, they should be getting it first because obviously they're more exposed to common people as opposed to, you know, no disrespect to the multimillionaire who's retired living at home and is really not having any, like... Contact Contact with anybody But just because of their wealth They go first But again that's I guess that's the American way Well Biden said to A couple of days or today That by May um, every They should have enough vaccines For every American I don't even want to hear What Biden talking about no more Cause then Are you done with Biden already? It's only February It's March It's March yeah. It's Women's Month Yeah happy Women's Month hey. But yeah No No I'm no. still giving him a chance. No, I, I he's hear not you. canceled yet. I didn't say he was canceled, but mm, like we we just he's like, trying. 
I saw this meme. He I, was, I was dying. He was like, I see a lot of this dude said, I see a lot of well dressed folks for folks who owe me money. <laughs> it's just us bombing other countries and things like that. Like, focus on what's happening here. It's like, why are we bombing other countries in the midst of our country falling apart right now? Yeah, this country is literally falling apart. Yeah, he came in like, he really bought the projects. I mean, he had to dig himself out of such a That's what I'm saying. Hole. He really bought the projects. Like, America is like, it's, it's holding on to its last leg. <laughs> It's literally like It don't make no sense How things Like as soon as something Comes up I be like Nothing shocks me anymore At this point mm. Okay so let's talk about We didn't tell our viewers How our Valentine's Day went Oh we still getting into last month um, <laughs> Well it's only two weeks ago Yeah Well how was your Valentine's? Um, My Valentine's was it was very... Are you trying to find the right words? I'm not going to lie. I did have an unexpected good Valentine's. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you did go? I did. I, I mean, I didn't go like how you went. Mm-hmm. You know, I like rolled past the party <laughs> and it was like two packed outside. So I like kind of like went back home. You spin the block. I just spent the block, but I did. Um, I did get like some really nice flowers. Um, we love those. Love flowers. Um, and then I got a surprise where like my Louis Vuitton guy called me. He was like, "Hey, we got some new stuff. Please come. You got to come today before it sells out." And then I went and I got surprised with like some luggage. And then on Valentine's Day. Um, oh, so this was pre. Yeah, well, I got something every day. I got some flowers on Friday, and then I got like my lug, my Louis Vuitton luggage mm -hmm. on Saturday, and then on Sunday, um, they filled my house up with like these big ass balloons. Aww, yeah, that's beautiful. That was nice. Yeah, was that nice. was beautiful. Why you had to hesitate? And you were thinking because it about wasn't it. like they wasn't there, so it wasn't like I didn't actually like go to dinner or anything like that. I was at home with Story. And we watched Baby Shark <laughs> a million times um, in probably every language that they have it playing on YouTube. Mm. Um, and we ordered Uber Eats. <clears throat> okay. So Did she enjoy the balloons? She did. Um, yeah. She let them go, so they were all at the top of my ceiling in my living room. So... I guess I went to Valentine's Day. I had a good Valentine's Day. I have no complaints. Yeah, that sounds beautiful. What about you? Um, um, <clears throat> Val <laughs> Valentine's Day was good. So it started off, it was a little questionable because I didn't know what it was going to give. Um, because uh, the person I'm like uh, seeing right now, he's just like, he was like, oh, I'm not into Valentine's Day. I was like, oh, God, here we go. Mm. You know how that go. So I'm trying not to like make it a big deal and things like that, but I'm like, okay. Um, but we had plans for dinner. So dinner actually was super amazing, super nice candlelight dinner at his house, like menus, the food was amazing. It was like flowers, really, really nice. And the best part is like John B came up the stairs. The singer. Yeah. So he got the singer to come. To Valentine's I need to meet him So Yeah we'll talk about that We're we, we gonna get there Cause you know what it is I was just having this conversation With Nina um, Parker Shout out to her When you save A person's phone number Like It's to a point I don't even save it no more She's like I don't save numbers Cause as soon as you save their number They start to act up Mm -hmm. So I'm at that place where it's just like I'm taking my super time with it And we had a conversation the other day And it left It was very questionable On how he responded to it so now I'm in a place where I'm not like um I don't force anything so if it comes it comes I'm just very like chill but it was really nice I got him I got him um some gifts he was like making fun of what I got him but he got these he got me these really two pretty necklaces um yeah I mean it was it was it was honestly a great valentine's 
I've it was okay. never bought a Valentine's Day gift. <clears throat> Is you that know, bad? Yes. You know they're supposed to get a gift too. No, I didn't know that. I yeah. thought it was like Sweetie's Day for them or something. No. I Like, where did y'all get this holiday from? I'm from the Midwest. It's it's the third Saturday in October. It's a legit... Halloween? Sweetie's Day. They have Hallmark cards for it. It's a real day. That sounds like Halloween. Shout out to the Midwest. Okay. That sounds like Halloween. And that's when guys... Get, or Sadie Hawkins every four years. The Sadie Hawkins dance? I've seen day. that. In like, Sadie Hawkins Day. I've like seen ta- Sadie Hawkins dance on those little Hallmark shows and those Netflix shows with the little white kids. That's when you're supposed to buy the guy a gift every four so years. So when you go to the dance, you're still in high school? Well, you're supposed to um, and ask him out on a date like Sadie Hawkins Day is the girl asking the guy out. Isn't this some high school thing? I've seen these on these TV shows. I'm telling you. I've never bought a Valentine's Day gift. Well, you need to. You're supposed to. It goes both ways. Mm-hmm. She like, yeah, no. But no, it honestly goes both ways. He was laughing. I got him um, not an, um, an Apple TV. Um, and then... Because he always compliments, like, my knives. So I got him a knife set, and he was like, what am I supposed to do with this? He didn't really like the gift, but, I mean, he liked the Apple TV. I like my gifts. Mm, so I got some good gifts, too. But that's the only time I don't buy gifts is, like, Valentine's Day. I just never think, like, that's that's not for boys. I think it's, like... You know they're going to be in our comments, right? Because they, they love when you say certain things like that. I, I, they're going to hit you with the... They're going to be like... Well, actually, I do want a gift. No, you're supposed to get guys gifts too. Well, it depends, like, if it's your significant other or whatnot or somebody you're dating. But you can get them a gift too. You celebrate Valentine's Day together. Because then if it's just all about you, that's your birthday. No. Let's strike that. <laughs> <laughs> we can't have people really believe in that. What? What you just said. No. No, 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 no. Why? No. What? Why though? Uh, moving right along. How was your trip to New York? <laughs> <laughs> we because girl, agree. I guess <laughs> agree to disagree. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh my gosh, New York was super incredible. Um, you know, seeing um Bobby Smurda just come home, being a part of that was super incredible. So. The backstory on that is, I think it was like end of November, early December. Mm-hmm. Sam, Black Sam, which is Nipsey's brother, mm-hmm. um, he called me. Mm-hmm. And usually Sam is like, he don't really want much. Like he'll ask a question, something light, but he don't really call you for favors or anything like that. And he's like, yo, um, hit me. And then I text him back. I was like, hey, what's going on? He's like, I need you to work with this um, kid. And I'm like, you know, he don't talk to me about music at all. Like, Mm -hmm. if we do, it's maybe pertaining to Nip or something like that. Then I'm like, okay, what kid? And he was like, "Um, give Fetty a call. And I was just like, I thought he was talking about Fetty Wap. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Because I knew him and Nip had a relationship or they like working on music. So I'm thinking it's Fetty Wap. And I'm like, okay. So then I call him like, hey, what's up? Fetty's like, you know. I'm thinking, what's, what was his line? Uh, 19, what was his line? Fetty's line? From the Remy 1938? Martin. Yeah, when he'd be like, 1938, whatever he used to scream. And there's somebody else who sound like a Brooklyn, L.A. person. So I'm like, hello? He's like, yeah, what's up? This Fetty. I'm like, what? He's like, no, <laughs> Fetty. He's like, Callie, you know me. Da-da-da-da, you know me. Nip. I'm like, okay. What's up? Then he was like, nah, you know me. Then it took me a minute. I'm like, wait a minute. I do know you. What's up? He was like, yeah, you know, I'm managing Bobby right now. He want to talk to you. I'm like, okay, talk to me about what? You know, it just kind of threw me off. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I don't think, you know, in my mind, I don't think I'm on certain people's radar, especially with him being incarcerated. So we got on the phone and he's telling me like, yo... I want to do this. I want to do that. I need to be in GQ. I need X, Y, Z. I need da, da, da. You need to be moved around. Yeah. And <laughs> Sam was like, I called Sam, but he was like, yeah, he was telling me all this stuff he needs, but I know you could make it happen. I was like, 
okay, cool. So interesting enough, it worked out well because he already had a relationship with Quavo. You know, I work with him Mm -hmm. and they already had a friendship. Quavo gets the jet. We got the GQ set up. He comes home. It was such an amazing, it was just great to be a part of that moment for him and just to see him highlighted the way he wanted, just coming off the plane, doing the whole thing. It was, it was like, a, a great moment. Like the fans and the public was really excited for Bobby to come home. Yeah, and he, he came on the right way. He did. He did. I was actually kind of excited, especially um, after I read, like, he took some of his friends' time. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, he a real one. He did for Roddy, who came home a little bit before him. So originally he was supposed to come home in December, and they pushed it back to February. So... He came home, he felt good, and it's just like, just seeing how he got off the plane. And you know, I'm big on branding how certain things look. So I him, saw the Louis, I saw the Louis suitcase. You, I, you saw I, that. And even the mask, I was more excited about um, making him the neck, the neck mask, um, which I actually made for somebody else. Mm-hmm. But then I figured he'd probably want it too. Mm-hmm. I made it for somebody else in red. Um, and I figured he'd want it in black, and he absolutely loved it. That was the first thing, because he takes COVID so serious. I know. Where it's just like, he's like, no, 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 I'm not taking off my mask. I'm not taking off my mask. Put your mask on. So Not drinking. I, turn, I saw him turn down that alcohol. I said, oh, my boy is on a straight and <laughs> narrow path. He Love is, to see it. He's like, I got to go. I need to go inside. I need to go here. So where are we going? I, need, I want to go home and go to sleep. Like, he, it, it, was just, it was just so funny. He was like, I got to what? Take a shower? How long I got? I'm like. Be free, <laughs> but you know that was the first day. He was happy to see his like family and his friends, and and honestly, his like mother and his godchildren. He kept talking about things like his nieces and nephews and godchildren. He said, "I'm so happy to see them," and it was just it was a great moment for him. So, so just be a, a fly on the wall for that was exciting. Mm, so New York was amazing. Yeah, New York was amazing. But you just came back from Africa. Yes. Okay. If you have never been to Africa, you know I ain't never been. I tried to invite you, but um, like a year and a half ago, and you turned it down. But if you never, so now we have to go this yeah. year. <laughs> but if you've never been to Africa, oh my God, it's like, it's so amazing. It was, I went to Ghana, mm-hmm. which they kind of like call Ghana like the Miami of Africa. It's like so peaceful. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so warm. I got to eat at some, even though the only one thing that I could say like that I didn't really like that much is that all of their food is so spicy. Ooh, okay. It's so spicy, but it was so good, so flavorful. Like I got to go to, like we drove like two hours to like a beach house. Oh. And nice. we went like on a yacht. We went. I just like laid out. I got me a tan. You look good. My skin. I've been drinking my water. The no makeup. Cause like when you go to like hot places, mm-hmm. you can't really wear makeup because it's so hot. It kind of like melts off. So I was just like, I'm just doing no makeup, just lashes, drinking my water. But Africa was. It was like. It was. I'm going back. Like, oh, I'm going this time. You <laughs> dipped your foot in the pool. I seen how it looked. I seen what it was given. It was given I luxury. Said, it yeah. was given. It was given the black girl luxury. Okay. Yeah. It was given. It it did what it was supposed to do. <laughs> okay. I'm, go, I'm going. I've never for drank that, that much champagne in my whole entire life. <laughs> I was literally on a champagne diet. Mm-hmm. Literally from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed, it was champagne being poured. It was the craziest, funnest time I've ever had. And so, like, I had, like, a really, 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 really good time. So that's, we have to go. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm going this time. You have to. I'm going. You have to. Because I was just thinking about how long it is. But, you know, me and flights aren't that bad anymore. Well, it's not even that bad. Like, we literally flew going. Like, the, they have a Delta flight. And so the Delta flight, you go from Atlanta to JFK. Mm-hmm. And that's only, like, well, from Atlanta, it's only two hours. Mm-hmm. And then from JFK to um, Ghana, it has nine hours. The only thing is, like, you do have to take, like, your, um, they do take COVID really, really, really serious. Mm-hmm. Um, I do, too. Yeah, but you know, like, in America, you don't have to get tested. You don't have to get tested to come back into the United States. Like, oh, there okay. you have to take the test inside the airport, and then you have to wait on your results. And I guess based on your results, like, I mean, God forbid that you, like, 
because some people are like faking these COVID tests. Mm -hmm. So like, which I highly don't recommend you fake it to go out the country because if you land in these countries, say like you fake the test and you land in these countries and you're actually, you know, positive for COVID, you're they're going to take you to a hospital and lock you up for 14 days. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I took a real test before I came, like the day before I came. And then you had to take like another test, which I realized like they're really, they stick that thing all the way up. Like it's, yeah. cr it's crazy how much like, you know, the United States be doing a little bit of cheating or I don't know if you need to go all the way up there. And then. Is um, it the five to 10 second rule too? Yes. It, it hurt. And yeah. then on my way back, the Delta flight canceled because the the um, the crew needed to rest. Mm -hmm. But I had to come here and film. So I'm like, yo, I got to get home. So I ended up taking a flight. I had to like, go out of my way. Like I had to fly six hours to Amsterdam yeah. and then nine hours here. But to get into Amsterdam, you had to take another test, an anti-agent test, where like you had to, we had to leave the airport, go to like this testing site, take another test, and the test had to be taken within three hours of your flight. It's the like they're not playing about COVID. Oh, okay. Like to where like when you got on a plane, you had to have a test result within three hours of boarding your flight. Shit. It was crazy. Okay, yeah, that's a, that's different. That was crazy. So, like, I had to take two COVID tests. Um, I was negative both times, but hey, yeah. hello, but I'm back. A little negative <laughs> brazzle dazzle. <laughs> a little COVID free me. Um, so, what do you have coming up? Um, I have a women's retreat this weekend. I'm super excited. Mm. Um, Where is it? So it's in Mexico. Ooh. You know, that's like our new Miami. Because okay. <laughs> it's right there. I do for a Mexico trip. Um, it's with Miel Organics. Mm -hmm. um, I like their products. Super excited. So there's some women there that I know is going to be there. Um, so that's going to be a few days. And I'm coming back. I'm doing this bonfire thing with um, Pretty Little Things. Go On Sunday. So I'm 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 like I'm excited for this weekend because I get to reset, relax, go on a nice little vacation, get a little tan, drink a little drink. Yeah, just get a tan, hit the beach. You know how I do, just sit on the beach, drink and eat, and be okay. Mm -hmm. What you got coming up? Um, this weekend. Oh, I'm going to Miami. Of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you're not doing All Star. No, I have to get out of Atlanta. Atlanta's going to be entirely too crazy for me. Like, what's so crazy is that maybe, like, last week, mm -hmm. um, we had went to, like, um, this guy named Doc. He, like, owned one of the strip clubs in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. He owns a couple of stuff in Atlanta. And, like, we went to his birthday party in Allure, and it was so packed and mm -hmm. so hot and, like, I was getting shoved and drinks were spilling all over me. And I was just like, I'm for sure not going to be here for us. It's going to be too and crazy And this was for just me. a regular day. This was just a regular, it was like a regular Saturday. And it was packed. packed. I mean, the party, like, his party was like, it was at a strip club. But it was like nice outside of the strip club. They they built an ice rink and he had like oh my gosh. ice skaters. Atlanta is, it's a wild place. Y'all doing a lot. It's a wild place. Y'all doing a lot. I love, I love it there. <laughs> um, so I decided um, since I did not get to spend Valentine's Day, now I'm like, yo, let's go down to Miami and kick it and have some fun. Oh, okay. You're spending the block on Valentine's Day and you're going with your boo. My, my Valentine, yeah, I guess. Just say it with me. Okay. My boo. Go ahead. Usher and, and Alicia brought this to us in a song. <laughs> Just say it. My boo. You know how you don't want to jinx stuff? So you want me to jinx mine. <laughs> <laughs> no jinxy pinksy over here. <laughs> oh, no, man. It'd be stressful in them streets. Mm -hmm. I love it here, though. I love mm -hmm. it here. I, I said that the other day, like... Mm -hmm. I don't know why I didn't become single sooner. It's not as it's not as great you as you it. make it seem. It's amazing. No, no, no. I don't have a problem with the single life. It's the of reconnecting with people 
and like meeting new people, trying to date and them understanding your schedule, who you are as an individual. That's the part that gets to be very draining. So deep. You go so deep. <laughs> That's the so deep. Kim, Kim is, Kim is going to be a newly single woman. You know what? Um, shout out, shout out to her. You know, shout out. She's my favorite. Shout out to her. You know, um, Chloe's my favorite. I like Chloe too, but Kim's not. She's the Don Dada. Kim's the Don Dada. I love Chloe, but I'm happy for her yeah. with whatever it is. Divorce is never a good thing, but. When I saw it, I was like, yes, a bitch could wear color again. Because he had her in the monotone clothes for years. Now she's about to be in some hot pink, some fuchsia. Like, I'm well, happy. she will pop out with color. She didn't even wear prints like that. Like, she didn't mix her color. She was nah, like, I want her back in some jeans and a tiger print shirt or something. Like, fluorescent colors. And, like. Hopefully they figure it out because they had some beautiful children. They together. did. They oh still my God. do. They have beautiful they kids. They are beautiful, and they figure they figure it out. But I'm happy that she just gets to wear color again. But how do you feel about um, like okay? So they were married, mm-hmm. and I used to want to get married like so bad. Like oh mm-hmm. my god! And I think like that comes from. Just as a child, you're like just it's like drilled in your head. You're supposed to get married. You're supposed to have kids. You're supposed to have a fence. You're supposed to have a dog. And so, like now that I've experienced life a little bit, mm-hmm. um, I still do want to get married, mm-hmm. but I've got a real side eye at it. So this is the thing. People have, especially our parents, created this blueprint for our lives before we were even born. And then they put that on us Mm -hmm. where it's like you don't necessarily need to follow that where it's like you get out of you you go to elementary school, you go to high school, from high school, you go to college, you go to some grad school, you get you know you graduate from there you get this doctrine whatever it is then you get this great career you find your significant other you get married you get the pick and fence and everything else we've come to realize that is not the that is not the standard dream that's the american that may be the american dream for other people but for us that's not the standard dream and then once we come to that realization and realize like i can create my own blueprint and that's not necessarily what success is or how I should put my success, I'm okay. So do you want to get married? I do want to get married when it's the time to. It was this thing where, oh my God, if I'm not married and have kids by 25, what is life? Mm-hmm. And it's not necessarily about that. What, Gina Davis had her her twin kids, what, at like 50? I tell people all the time about kids, like just make sure you, <laughs> just make sure you are done Moving around. <laughs> Moving around. I mean, you could definitely move around with kids. It just mm-hmm. gets gets a little bit like, you know, gets a little bit like you can't be a hot girl. Like I told you and uh-huh, <laughs> we was in a group text. I'm like, I'm not a hot girl no more. I'm medium. <laughs> I'm medium. Moms are just medium. <laughs> nah, you, you still, you're still able to do it. But with you, it's just like you like the small things, which are very important of I need to get home and pick story up. That's something you love to do. Um, My baby don't feel good. I want to be with her. So you don't want to miss those moments. So that is important. And I think for me as a parent, I wouldn't probably want to either. I'm probably going to be my child's best friend. But you'd be like, damn, Greece for the weekend. Do sound fun. (laughs) (laughs) They'd be like, you want to go to Greece? Uh, I got to go to take story to a birthday party. Can't, but send me pictures. You know what? I was waiting for like which messed it up is COVID messed it up. Is is so many parties she's about to? I'm about to join the influencer um, mom kid club. Mm-hmm. You know, I was ready to check one to all the Disney events. Then COVID happened because Story is about to be my plus one. I'm like, man, drop her off. We going to this Jurassic Park thing. We going to go to Disney. They yeah, just released this. I was ready. I'm taking her. I'm like, oh, um, Travis and them daughter having a party. Let's go, Story. I'm just showing up. I'm like, Karen, where you get this kid from? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's my kid. I was ready. Still how, am. How do you feel about um, Meghan and Harry leaving the royal family? Like, that's like a really big deal for you know Harry to literally 
tell his whole entire royal family, you know what? (laughs) I'm going to see y'all later. It's more about my wife and my kids, their sanity, their happiness. And I think, like, for me, I think, like, he sees, Mm -hmm. like, how Megan was perceived was kind of like how his mom was perceived. And he was just like, he doesn't want history to repeat itself. Like, they literally left their country. Yeah. Got stripped of all of their, um, you know, titles and names and stuff like that. But you want to know what was very disturbing to me Mm -hmm. is when they said, like, on the on her child's birth certificate, her name is not on there. That's that was crazy to me. Why is that? I don't know. It just says the Duchess of. Of whatever she is, I, I mean, I forget the okay. title, but it's not her name. It's it's his name, and then it just says the Duchess. So this is how I see it: like Harry shows peace over the popularity of that country, and you can't take away they. There are people who live and serve gratitude and give back to their community. Mm-hmm. They don't need a title for that. So you can't tell them that they can't go help the homeless or they can't do certain things. They're still going to be able to make money. They're still going to be good. And I'm happy that he chose that. He's seen what it did to his mother at a young age. And then y'all about to, y'all think y'all about to do this again to my black wife? (laughs) (laughs) Move. And they're mad, I think, more than ever. And I love it that he chose his queen over the kingdom. Checkmate, bitches. (laughs) That's right. I do love it. You know what? What's that song? Cue it up for me. Put that woman first. (laughs) Cue it up. Cue it up. Cue it up. Put that woman first. Jaheem. Thank you. Let's ride out. Let's give it a good 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. That was Harry right here. He walking around. They Santa Monica home. They live in California? Yes. I'm waiting to run into them at Trader Joe's. Hey, girl. You from Crenshaw? I can't wait. You know I'm going up. That's the only people I haven't seen yet. I'm going to be out of here on Instagram. You know what? She played in one of my favorite sitcom suits. I love that show. Oh, I didn't know. That was Mark Wahlberg, right? No. Mm-mm. 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 It was about the two lawyers. I forget their names. It was about the two lawyers. But once she got engaged to him, she kind of like had to um, leave the show. But she was, it was a really good show. They had like probably like four or five seasons. Mm-hmm. She's one of my favorites. I know that's right. She shows love. Amen. I'm happy for them and just them doing that. Him putting his Nubian first. His putting him putting his queen first. He put his family first, which is yeah. like, like wow. And they're getting ready to have another baby. So I know. Congratulations. she don't. She don't need none of that stress that comes with it and how they were like. You already know how I feel, like, if somebody says something about me on Instagram. The fact that these people then go, like, they have magazine articles trashing her. The same country that they want her to love is disrespecting her. How does that work? It doesn't. So she's like, man, I'm about to take myself back home. Taking my talents elsewhere. Yeah, I'm taking my talents back home (laughs) where the people appreciate me, where I can go, you know, live a life of, of, of giving and helping and... You know, they're not treating me like this, where it's just it's it's really a race thing. And I I felt so bad for her, but I'm glad she's okay, and that they're happy. They have their beautiful son. They got another baby on the way. Hopefully I'm at the baby shower with story. (laughs) You know, if you listening, girl, you know, you don't have to call me. Just email me the invite. Me, too. (laughs) Okay, speaking of like black women, let's talk about um I was watching the news and I saw how um, Nori got that new um, leading role in Queens, like that new show on ABC with Eve. Oh, nice. Congratulations. I know that's right. She I'm, winning. I'm loving the fact that like... And I love her. And she's from Jersey. So shout out to her. She's from Newark, I believe. Mm. So I'm loving the fact that now it's not... We don't just have like a co-starring role. We have a leading role on primetime television. I know Queen Latifah got the equalizer. Um, It's just so many different shows because before we just had like one or two, but now it's just like, oh, look at us here. (laughs) Okay, over here. We're normalizing it. 
yeah. that feels good. That does feel really, really good. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Um, did you see that Billie Holiday movie? I didn't get to see it yet, but I believe, um, what's her name? Audra Day? Mm-hmm. And Tessa Thompson? Tisa Thompson, I Tisa. believe. Um, Tessa Thompson, right? Tessa Thompson. I believe Audra Day won an award for it. Yeah, she won a Golden Globe. Congratulations to her. We gotta give them their roses. Yeah, I'm 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 happy that they're getting it. Even with the Golden Golden Globe started off, it was like I watched the first ten minutes. Mm-hmm. It was like pow pow pow. It went pow 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 means black 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 black. I didn't know what awards what was happening, but I was like okay okay. Okay, this feels good. I'm about to change the channel now. <laughs> they they was like, let's get them out of here at the beginning. Let them happy. Like, um, but it was it was it was amazing. It was amazing to see. It was like really really amazing where it's starting to feel like folks are getting our. We're finally getting our just due. Mm-hmm. And not to say like America's normal again since Trump has been gone, but it's like mm, racism is like down a little bit. It's like at a good 75%. I'm not saying it's gone. It's, but it's definitely like, not gone. No, no, no. I mean, the flags are kind of down a little bit more. It's not as much in the yards. Well, it's them, not being... Um, they're back to hiding. Yeah, it's not It's Thorn not okay because, you know, Trump kind of like made it okay. Yeah. It was like okay to be racist. Well, yeah, now you have to think about your actions and the consequences that come with it. But I'm not seeing red hats as much. I'm not seeing people go crazy in Trader Joe's for wearing a mask. So we're starting to bring back normal behavior. But just in this day and age, just to see how this last year was a lot. And now we're in the space where like, okay, we're celebrating. We're in a good space. This is nice. Folks are getting their flowers. We're having these moments. I'm like, okay, this is exciting. Mm-hmm. I'm so. Do you think Trump is going to run again? Probably one of his kids or something. I hope not. Ugh. What's he doing? I don't know. He's in Florida taking up that space. What space? Like he had like this resort, I guess, and he is now living on the resort, and the town is trying to get. The town kind of like wants to kick him out, Mm -hmm. but they can't because he's always done it. But now that he is like, you know, Trump and he's not like Mm -hmm. that popular, they want him to leave, but he's not leaving. So does his family and everybody live there? Yeah, but it's like a resort, like a golf course resort type of thing. Like, so it's like, it's not like just a house. It's like his wife is still with him too. Where is she going? I don't know. I thought maybe she got a little run for it. She wanted to go home or... Where? No. She is s- still there. She ain't never want to hold his hand in public. So I thought she 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 ran, she, she took a quick run for it. <laughs> but it's weird. It's like, I don't know what he's doing ever since his Twitter got deleted. Well, he's... He, all of his social medias. No, he's Instagram, I th- gave him back his account, but I don't ever look at his Instagram. Well, he didn't have an Instagram account. He had the president's account. and No, he, got- he had real, no, I think it was what, real Donald Trump? No, oh. no. He had POTUS or something. Oh, I unblocked that account. And it moved to Biden. Yeah, I unblocked that account. That felt weird. I was like, dang, I really had the president blocked for four years. <laughs> I was like, I can, I can do, I can remove this POTUS. You, I could, I could see what you're talking about now, but his personal account, I haven't seen. I don't know what he's talking about and everything else, but, oof. Okay, so speaking of um, everything that's going around the world, so you know, um, speaking of it's being Black Women's, not it's not Black Women's Month, even though it should be. Black it's Women. Women's History Month. <laughs> <laughs> so you, but black women are continuously being amazing. Uh-huh. So you know, a black woman helped create the COVID nineteen vaccine. Va- yes. Okay. I thought she was gonna stop at COVID nineteen. I was like, no, we did it. So no, we did it. No, her name is Dr. Kismekia Corbett. Okay. So I just wanted to KC. Her- I'm gonna call her Dr. KC. I don't know if she'll go for that, but <laughs> she, we never going to meet each other. <laughs> but she's in the um, 2021 Times um, 
next 100. So that's really, really amazing. Shout out to her. And that, and that right there is, what was you, you ever seen that meme? What would they what? do with women? What would they do without us? Obviously not excited. We got a whole new president, turn Georgia blue. Um, Shout out to Stacey. Gracing the time cover, just getting our accolades and our flowers. It's it's just, it's such an amazing time. It's such an amazing time. And, and then Ruth Carter, she was the first um, black costume designer to get a star on Hollywood. Shout out to her. <laughs> she I'm going to take me a little trip around the corner and make sure I go lay some flowers near there to give her her flowers. Uh-huh, she did. Black Panther, <laughs> Coming to America, Do the Right Thing. I remember her from Coming to America. Now, speaking of stars, uh-huh. there's some people who ain't get one. I know. I just, I saw that. Okay. Beyonce got a star? I don't know if Beyonce got a star. Whitney ain't got a star. Whitney don't have a star. We need to fix that. Uh, neither does Denzel Washington doesn't have a star, I don't think. I wonder if he even wants a star. He probably was like, y'all not walking on me. <laughs> <laughs> Denzel needs a star, but I know you, you're you supposed to submit it. He probably, like, maybe people haven't, but Denzel needs a star, Beyonce... Um, Whitney Houston, of course. How come Whitney don't have a star? She should have got one when she was alive. She, like, her vocals is unmatched. Because there's some people who get one. I'm like, that's a little questionable. If some people get it, I'd be like, y'all just give stars to anybody. Donald Trump has a star. Like, how the, you know, there was a time where he was actually liked. So with the Trump top, with the Taj Mahal and certain things, he was like okay and likable. You, you know, he used to be on some of some of our shows, but then he decided to go with enjoying racist America for his bottom dollar, his his bottom line. Mm. So good luck with that. But there's certain people who deserve some stars. We're gonna I don't know how you how you like lobby for them, but Whitney definitely deserves a star. She do. Biggie Smalls deserves a star. He does. Does Tupac have a star? Tupac needs a star. For sure. Mm-hmm. Tupac had the greatest diss song. I still, I just imagine what the fuck was the people in the studio thinking when he said, fuck you and a click you claim. <laughs> I was watching I would have been like, I would have been in the studio like, whoa. Did you see that this girl <laughs> made this meme like she was a background <laughs> singer? <laughs> And she, she pretended she was a background singer on that. She was like, "How? I wonder how they was acting. She was like, oh, what? What? And so I would have been like, ooh, it's getting spicy. Yeah. Just imagine being in the studio and the first words out hit out the mouth is, fuck you and the click that you claim. And he there telling folks they got <laughs> syphilis and all that. I said, I would have been like, stop playing with my medical records. like, what? <laughs> but... Speaking of greatness, I just watched, oh my gosh, I got a story to tell. Biggie Smalls on Netflix. Shout out to D-Rock. Watch that. There is like, I've watched numerous Biggie Smalls documentaries. Mm -hmm. Nothing was done like this because it's really, I got a story to tell. He's really telling his story through his lens. They have all this old footage which I'm like, why didn't they present this before? Mm-hmm. I didn't want to watch all these documentaries on conspiracies on him. I, You know, I didn't get to appreciate him at such a young age. And just seeing it now, how he grew up, the choices he made, seeing him on tour, how he brought people on tour, and he's talking into the camera. Mm-hmm. It literally felt like he produced this documentary show. Shout out to, to, to D-Rock who did that. His mom was on it. His grandmother... Like, it was just amazing to see that other side of him really telling the story. You see him in the hotel room, the interview he gave the day before he died, and just, like, me realizing, like, all of that transpired on on Fairfax and Wilshire. Like, it was just, it was like, it did make me sad. It made me excited and happy that he lived an incredible life. Mm -hmm. Even though it was short, he had an amazing story. He was loved and he did something that um, put him in the history books of hip hop in such a short time. So it was just really great to to like see his story and hear him kind of tell it. And it was so perfect. I'm like, damn, I wish this 
we should have got this a long time ago. That was the story that I loved. You got to watch it. It was so crazy because I was going to watch it last night, but I was like, is this just another documentary? i would seen a thousand of them. And then I chose to watch um, Malcolm and Marie, and that was the most <laughs> toxic shit I've ever seen in my whole entire fucking life. Yeah, it's, it's a couple yelling at each other through, like... I watched it. What was crazy is I watched it halfway through. I was like, oh, I lived this. <laughs> Okay, this I already is, know how it ends. This I live this. <laughs> I was like, I live this. Thank you very much. Um, but they've had some good shows on there. Oh my gosh, I love Jeannie and Georgia. Did you watch that? Mm-mm. Oh my gosh, it was getting, wasn't that wasn't they getting like backlash? For what? For um, that Taylor Swift. She be all right. She got a whole song called Shake It Off, and she can't shake a joke off. No. Ooh. No. Well, no, but that's... No, it's it's it's. What did, they, what did they do? It, they made a joke about, like, her dating life, and, you know, she's... She doesn't like that conversation because they do make it seem like... She, da- she dated, what, like, seven or eight people in the span of, what, like, 10 years or something. That's not a lot of people. Yeah, but given with the climate and certain things, people make it seem like a lot. It To me, I don't even remember the joke, and she made it larger than what it needed to be, and what sucks is... People date seven people in a year. In a year? A girl in a month. Right, it's like, people but be like... I think she should be at a place where she should be okay, um... I'm not going to tell anybody how to feel, but I don't, I don't necessarily think it's something where you're at a point. She has to understand her following. And now with your following, your following is going to go leave comments. Well, they pissed. Oh, no, they're going to go leave comments. They're going to go harass and do certain things. You got to remember your, your, your fandom and your kingdom. So they go and attack. And, and They should have left my dog alone, though. She, you know what? They could have left. They you know what? I love her too. But like this is how the thing. Kevin Durant told um, Cash Kevin Dog. told Cash Dog, you did not have to use KD to get this tweet off, and that's how I feel like Taylor. You did not have to use this joke to get the point across. You Leave know, me the fuck up out of it. You know what was and funny? Taylor. What was funny about that? A couple of hours went by. He was thinking about it. Like he sat there. He, <laughs> he looked said, at it like. You did not have to use KD. It took him, I said, when he was smiling, I said, oh, yeah, he thought about this. Somebody hit him in the group text. <laughs> like, yo, she playing with your name. Somebody sent him the laughing emoji. <laughs> I was like, that's how Taylor probably felt. I was like, he you ain't have to do that. Because it was early when he responded. So I said, he woke up and decided, you know what? I'm choosing violence today. I don't care. I'm sitting <laughs> out and I shouldn't be on Twitter. And I'm dealing with, like, I think he's, like, healing off of something. He was like, forget that. Stop mm-hmm. stop playing with me. He chose violence. Yeah, I like was cracking out. He put his protein shake down because it was early. He put that protein shake down, hopped on Twitter, and she loved it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shout out to Cash Star. We Shout- allowed to call her KD? I don't know. Oh yeah. She said that she the real KD. Shout out to KD. Y'all can Both figure out. <laughs> Uh, y'all can figure out whoever that is how you want to how you want to label that which is interesting nonetheless but I'm excited for this month mm-hmm. you know us being female entrepreneurs and all mm-hmm. it is women's history month so the wheels started spinning they did in the head so we're excited to announce first of all she called me at 3 a.m with this um this bomb ass idea first of all did i text or call i think you might have texted and then i didn't respond and then you called yeah that's because you, that's you know how it go I, I did like a 30 second grace period uh-huh not not really probably like a three second because i didn't see the bubble right away <laughs> and i'm like mm, it feels like baby shark is happening over there anyway so <laughs> let me wake her up <laughs> so you know given what the climate of COVID, everything happening. We have some amazing support and women who are part of um, our friend group and everything else. And we want to invest, you can call it give back to women, entrepreneurs, businesses who are out there right now. The whole entire month. The whole entire month. So next episode, I'm going to pick somebody. Ming is going to pick somebody. Uh, We're going to obviously, we're going to call them up. Let them know But this is how it works 
I know we are not giving too much details, but it's not a lot of details to give. We're going to pick five lucky women who need a helping hand, give them, gift them $10,000 each to $10, invest into the, yes. is there like a $10,000 song or is that not like a lot? Yes, that's a lot. Yeah. There we go. I need, I mean. Money, 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 money. $10,000. Yes. Um, to invest in taking their business to the next level. So for you to enter on the Girl I Guess pod on our Instagram, leave your name and your inst- at your inst- at your business on Instagram. If it's on there, leave your website. Leave it in the comments. And tell on- us why. Yes, and tell us why. Leave it in the comments for this video. Please leave it on there. Don't DM us. No DMs. Yeah, none of that. We're going to literally, we want to keep this open, as open and honest and transparent as possible. We're going to just pick a lucky listener. And the great thing is, is we're going to give you more information about, um, we found an incredible listener who wanted to sponsor this um, for us. So I'm going to provide more information about them on the next episode when we pick as well. But we're excited. You know, this is, we call it our hashtag women for women. Women for women. Yes. And that's literally what it's, what it's about. We, it's women's history month. We're in a day and age where it's just like, people always ask us for help and we want to find, we're finding our way to help. Mm-hmm. So, it's March Madness. Yes. This the is women's way. Yeah, this is March Madness. I like that. <laughs> that was nice. March Madness, the women's way. Um, and we want to give each business 10K. We're going to pick five for the whole month. We're That's, super excited. You know what you could do with $10,000? I hope they get it all together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's able to like even if you have a startup, it's doing well, mid level, entry level, whatever it is. It's just our way of of just helping you continuing to grow. And yeah, this is our March Madness, <laughs> the women's way. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm excited. Me too. So I guess that wraps episode seven. I stopped counting. I think we can stop counting now. No, we cannot stop counting. Every bit counts. counts. Yeah. Okay. Every episode, episode, episode seven. seven. Hey. Episode seven. Did she here? She go with her megaphone. I thought I was bad. Girl, hey, is it on? Yeah, Girl, I guess. <laughs> Girl, I guess. So I'm excited. Next week, we giving away twenty k, ten k me, ten k you. Money, 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 money. 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 Super excited about that. Where the money reside. Where the money reside. Shout out to um. Shout out to him. <laughs> um. And yeah, you ready to get up out of here, girl? That's a wrap. Yes, let's go. Yes. Peace out, y'all. <laughs>